So, I received a question about the using of objects um, either for wearing on the body or having in the house and what would be the reason to choose for an object from a specific tradition. What are the differences between these holy items? Well, the differences are quite big, I would have to say. Uh, let's start a little bit with the shamanic objects, which is the oldest culture, of course. Shamanic objects are really also very much connected to the first messiah of light. So there are generally objects of power, of authority. A shamanic object will usually help a person uh, to become strong or uh, to stay strong. So many shamanic objects are uh, defensive in nature. They keep your power from uh, being taken away or from being blocked. Um, and also they often act as symbols of authority, uh, allowing you to connect to certain powers uh, within you or outside of you and to command them. So a shamanic object is usually um, not so much an object of, of reverence, something you would kneel before and pray to. Uh, it is rather simply a practical tool, like, okay, I'm going to do this. Um, and just like a workman who would ask, where's my screwdriver or bring me that drill or that hammer, a shaman would grab a feather or a branch or a nut or um, some other object which is very suitable to that specific task he's carrying out at that moment. So shamanic objects are very much a toolkit. Uh, shamanic objects are also very much tied to the shaman who created them. A shamanic object is a living object. Usually a spirit has been bound into the object. Um, this can be either by an agreement between the spirit and the shaman that the spirit would like to incarnate in the form of that object and to work together with the shaman, but some shamans are a little bit more ruthless and they will just bind nature beings into objects to use their powers. Um, but because of the very specific nature, it is also quite dangerous to touch shamanic objects unless you have permission of both the object and the shaman. Many shamans tend to curse their objects and many spirits tend to resent being, in a way, grabbed or used by a person they don't know or they don't want to be used by. So shamanic objects are dangerous, don't mess around with them. So the next set of objects I will move into are the Egyptian objects. And I will also tell a little bit about the Assyrian objects. So these objects are in a way similar to shamanic objects in that they are embodiments of a spirit. But the spirit itself has much more of a sense of duty, a sense of purpose than a shamanic object. In a shamanic object there is power and ultimately it is the shaman who makes the decision, who gives the guidance um, of what that power should be used for, or how it should manifest itself. An Assyrian or an Egyptian object tends to have its own programming. When it was created, it was made to defend the temple, it was made to give healing power. And um, this is a fixed programming. It also has to do a lot with their concept of deities, which have a very specific role, a very specific job to do. They had a polytheistic system where in a way every task had a specific deity. So there is a specific teacher for every profession. And this is also what these objects are about. They are about doing one specific thing, working with one specific god, teaching one specific lesson or having one very specific so you can see them not so much as tools but much more as robots. They have a lot more power and a lot more intelligence than a shamanic object. There is really a higher degree uh, in these uh, types of uh, things. And the workmanship I have to say is superb because even though they are 
many thousands of years old. Many of them are still quite functional. So if you ever do get the opportunity to go to a museum and see some of these original works, uh, they're quite impressive, also still quite active, although not many people know how to use them anymore, because a lot of the practical knowledge of how to work with them has been lost, but wonderful objects nonetheless. The next group of objects I want to go into are, in a way, the, the Vedic objects but also the hermetic objects in the, in the Western tradition. Usually they are very symbolic in nature, so they represent a certain uh, planet or a certain power or a certain concept, uh, like male, female, wisdom, war. Um, and as such they are not so much uh, a spirit, there is no individualized consciousness there, as much as that there are a universal power um, and there's a difference in a way you could say between universal powers and the more human scale powers which you have in many polytheistic religions so within the Vedic culture and also within Western Hermeticism people try to transcend their human boundaries they don't want to be limited to just a human point of view or human thinking. They want to realize the greater powers in the cosmos. And people start to have an understanding that they themselves are just manifestations of these greater cosmic powers. And these objects are meant to help them to reconnect to their source. I have love, but my love is merely a faint mirror image of the essence of love, which is a cosmic power. And of course I have the ability to fight in me, but my ability to fight is also merely a dim reflection of the cosmic principle of struggle. And I can only ever possibly manifest the smallest, tiniest facets of these cosmic powers. But by using objects from the Vedic and Hermetic traditions, it becomes possible to reconnect myself to that source, so that part of me may be nourished, may be stimulated, may grow beyond itself, and ultimately I myself will also become stimulated by that object, will be nourished by the presence of that object. So they're a little bit like having um, the ability to plug in to a greater power. So, the Vedic and the Hermetic object. What we come next to are the Christian objects. The Christian objects are again quite different from other objects. Christianity is very much a specific path of spiritual development. It's not so much uh, a cosmology as shamanism or um, the Vedic tradition or Egyptian tradition was. Christianity is not about using everything which exists in the cosmos or connecting or understanding everything which exists in the cosmos. It's very much about you following one specific path which will improve your karma which will allow you to grow yourself spiritually. So objects from the Christian tradition are very much used to give guidance so that the person will make the correct decisions, will do the right thing. Um, they are not tools to be used in the same way as shamanic things are, because the person themselves is not supposed to be the boss. They're supposed to be, in a way, subservient to the divine and inspired by the divine. So the Christian objects are usually more sources of knowledge, sources of wisdom, uh, sources of understanding and getting enough support, enough healing to be able to continue on your chosen path of self-development. So they're not about making you or powerful or great or rich, but they are about giving you what you need 
to continue on your path. So there's a strong, you could say, intelligence or system uh, behind the Christian objects. And if you are indeed following this system, or if you are in that Christian flow, then you can benefit from it. But it's very much a dedicated object which will only serve one purpose and will only work for people who are on that path. So if I have nothing with Christianity, if it's really not my thing and I want to develop myself in a different way, then I will not benefit from having Christian objects around me. Last but not least, Buddhistic objects. The Buddhistic objects are uh, quite interesting because almost all objects are in a way made for humans. They're made to be used by humans. Um, in shamanic tradition you also make objects which you use for helping nature, for helping nature spirits, for helping animals, for helping plants. But then it is in a way for a long time forgotten almost that we are part of nature instead of part of culture. But the Buddhists kind of like come full circle and say that we should help all beings um, to improve their consciousness, to improve their karma and ultimately to reach enlightenment. So it doesn't matter if something is a dog or a cat or something else, as long as it has a consciousness, even if it is a spirit which has no body, as long as it has a consciousness, it is worthy of being helped, it is worthy of being protected, it is worthy of being saved. Ultimately, we are meant to move up in consciousness and to realize that everything is an illusion. And there is a very tough way to do that and there is a more gentle way to do that. And both ways work. And this is, you could say, the light side and the dark side a little bit of the Buddhistic tradition. Because everything is illusion, that you have a body, it's very transitory. Every feeling you have, every thought you have, is just transitory. And also the pain, the suffering you have, it's also transitory. And if you don't want to have that pain and that suffering, well, then you should escape from it. Then you should move on to higher levels. So this is very much the stick which is driving you <laughs> to move into a higher consciousness so you won't have to suffer all the effects of having a low consciousness anymore. The carrot is very much that there are beings which have devoted themselves to helping others, of uh, giving them guidance, giving them protection, giving them healings. And um, by listening to them, attuning to them, uh, learning from them, um, all these blessings can also be absorbed and found. And um, they're not very strict. They're not saying usually like, well, if you don't walk our path, if you don't listen to us, if you don't pray every day, we won't bless you. Um, they're very open, they're very giving. Uh, more so than the Christian objects in general. Um, and by receiving these yeah, beneficial effects from them, people tend to get interested. They want to know more, they want to find out where is this energy coming from, how is it done, and then they're in a way more used as a carrot for people to say like, wow, this is great, this is fantastic, I want more of it. So it acts a little bit like a like a drug, you could say, the Buddhistic objects. So the Buddhistic objects in themselves are, uh, you could say, teachers or guides for the path by giving people very nice and positive experiences. So a very giving uh, a system, I would have to say. I've never had problems or heard of anybody having any problems with uh, Buddhistic objects yet, but from pretty much all other objects I've uh, seen clients who ran into trouble with them. But as with everything, if you know what you're doing, it's not dangerous. Just know what tradition you're working with, how to work with that tradition, and you'll be fine.
and it's great to have these objects around so that not everything has to depend on you and the quality of your energy body all the time. You're a great support.